In this video, I'm going to show how to download a CSV file and then load it into a Jupyter Notebook and do some very basic Python analysis on the data. We're just going to load the data and do a bit of slicing. Of course, we can use this data set for more things in the future, but this is just a quick intro. So first of all, we have to get data. And that's one interesting thing about uh, this day and this time is that there's no shortage of data that's being created every second of the day. Uh, but then we have to find data that we can actually use. And uh, for data science, a lot of times we go to Kaggle, which is a wonderful source for data. Uh, I think it's also a well-known source of data. And a lot of times I try to find unique sources of data that maybe haven't been explored yet. One really good place to find data is municipal data, and most cities have some kind of municipal data uh, site. And so I've gone to the city of Cincinnati's traffic crash reports. And so this is any crashes that happened and were reported within the city of Cincinnati. So I'm going to choose export. We'll go ahead and say download. Uh, this is a very large data set, uh, 360,000 rows. That's good when we're doing machine learning because it gives us quite a bit, uh, quite a bit of data to uh, to train our model. So I'm going to go ahead and choose download. And now I simply paste the file into a little folder directory that I've made here, where I'm going to put uh, some of our Python experiments. Now I've already installed and have started Jupyter Notebook. So on my Windows machine, you know, I could just type in Jupyter and it will start. I've already done that part. Uh, so at this point, we have a notebook that's unnamed. I'm going to go ahead and save this as traffic crash reports. Now we're ready to get started. Now, if this is your first time in the Jupyter environment, you'll need to uh, run this pip install np and pip install pandas. I have already done that, so I'm not going to bother with that. But I do need to go ahead and import uh, numpy and pandas. So, And then Alt-Enter will execute this line and give me another line. You see the asterisk means that it's still running, and then when it, yeah, when it turns to a number, it means it has finished running. A couple things that I want to do, just kind of a good idea uh, to uh, prevent line wraps I can change a setting here. I'll just paste this in, make that a little bit faster, and once again, Alt-Enter. So if we end up displaying data, uh, that will prevent any line wraps and let us uh, see the data so we can scroll. It's a lot easier that way. And by default, our notebook will show only output from the last line, but what I can do here is I can make it interactive and say show output from uh, the other lines as well. Now we're ready to load our data. Do see, actually, it's a fairly big file, but that's where Python really excels as it's used to dealing with large data. It's also kind of a cumbersome file name. I'm going to rename this. I'm going to go ahead and copy uh, so I make sure I get the capitalization right, but just to get a little simpler name there. The cool thing is now we can import this with just one line. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste in that file name I changed it to. It just makes it a little bit easier. And then we need to remember I had that CSV extension as well. Not a big surprise with a data set this large, but it tells us that, hey, uh, looks like you have a few columns with mixed types. So we need to specify the type or uh, clean up the data a bit, but that's a bit advanced for now. So let's not worry about that just yet. Right now we're going to take a look at uh, the data set itself. So we have a total of five statements I've added here. Let's look at what each one does. And remember, because we said we changed the notebook to say give output for every line, we should see these all sequentially. So crashes df head, that head function will give us the top five rows of a data frame by default. Data frame, think like a spreadsheet or you know, set of data with columns and rows and the like. Then we have crashes df columns, and this will give us a nice look at the columns. Now. Uh, columns are neat because we can start to think about which ones do we want to use as features and which ones do we want to use as targets, assuming we're doing some kind of supervised learning. Uh, but, but at this point, it's good to look at the columns because we also want to think about which columns are okay to have null or invalid data and which columns are not. Typically, the feature columns we want to clean up but we don't want to clean up necessarily every column and drop rows that are empty because 
we could have one one column that we're not even going to use in our analysis that has a significant amount of empty. So now's a good time to start thinking about that. Our next line is crashesdf.info, which gives us even more information than columns does. And this is a really good time to start thinking about how we want to uh, handle our model. So we have the column number and then the column name and the number of records that are not null for this column. So you see that address, uh, latitude, longitude, fairly similar, although curiously, there are two more latitudes and longitude. But when we get to age, we have a lot more nulls because you see that's 315,000 where the others are 360,000. Uh, scroll on down, we get we, we have uh, road class, road class description. And again, those are a little bit smaller numbers. Now, we also see the data type. And typically when we're working with pandas and we're, we're bringing in data into a data frame, we'll typically see data in one of three general categories. And that would be an int, which is a whole number, a float, which is a number with a decimal, or an object, which could really be anything. Many times an object is a string. And if you remember a few moments ago, it told us there were three columns with mixed data. I believe it was three, which is age, eight, which is crash location, and then it was somewhere up in the 20s. Uh, you, know, you can rewind and or I can go up and see, but one of the ones up in the 20s that said, well, I feel like it should be a certain type of data, but I'm not certain. And so that's what happens. For describe, uh, this one's really neat because it gives us a lot of statistical inference about the columns, but notice it's not all of the columns. It's only those numerical columns. And that's why that data type is very important. But you see, we have a count. So how many are there? Uh, a mean, what's the average, standard deviation, minimum, first quartile, first half, third quartile, and max. Where this is handy is sometimes if you're dealing with a data set and you have empty data, one option is to drop the empty data. But the other is just to fill it in with kind of like an assumed value. If you still want to preserve the other data of that row, sometimes what we'll do is we'll fill it in with uh, the mean of that column. Finally, we have uh, crashes DF, and here I'm selecting a specific column, Community Council Neighborhood, which is kind of like a subdivision of the city of Cincinnati, downtown over the Rhine, uh, Coryville, West End, North Side, all of the different neighborhoods that are in the 52 neighborhoods in the city of Cincinnati. And guess what? We got an error. <laughs> but errors are a great time to learn, right? Uh, that's okay because we can use the information we already have to fix the error. So I typed in freehand community council neighborhood. And I see here it's uppercase where I was doing camel case. Maybe that's my mistake. Not a problem. Uh, we can simply replace. And just to keep things clean, I'm going to go ahead and copy this and put this on a new line. And we see now we get better data back. So we have West End, South Fairmount, uh, basically the first five rows. One neat thing we can do with head is it gives us it gives us five rows by default, but I could expand this, let's say, to 15. And now we see the, the community council neighborhood of the first 15 rows of our data set. Several West End, South Fairmount, Mount Auburn, Camp Washington, and then NAN means data not there. Um, this could be a potential feature if we're trying to figure out uh, where crashes happen. A neighborhood could be a potential feature because there might be a density of that neighborhood, uh, like downtown, very dense, or it might be a neighborhood that's very steep, uh, like Mount Auburn. Uh, between downtown and Clifton, there's you know very steep hill there. Uh, when the weather's bad, the, that hill and the sharp turns on that hill can be uh, very dangerous. Uh, so there are a lot of different things we could look at. We could we could also look at neighborhoods that are further out from the city center. So this is where I might think hard about how much null data is there and what do I want to do with that null data. Just as we have head, we also have tail. And you notice tail will give us the bottom five records. Just as we can do with head, we can also give this an index and say, okay, well, instead of the bottom five, uh, how about you give me the bottom ten? We can do what slicing, which is where we look at one particular column. There are a couple different ways we can do this. But let's let's take a look at crashes df and uh, let's pick one of these. We'll go with um, let's go with the address x. That's fine. Just grab one of the, actually, you know any of these I could grab, but let's go ahead and grab address x. 
Notice if it's named well, I can just reference it like so. I can use the data frame and then a period and then the column name. By named well, I mean doesn't have any goofy characters in it, any spaces or anything like that. I get quite a bit of data back here. Probably bit off a bit more than I can chew, more than I could chew, because it looks like I got all of the data uh, for that address X. Um, I could say crashes df address X dot head. This will be a bit more manageable like so. Okay, notice that came a bit faster, came back a bit faster, but nonetheless, I'm still impressed that Python can handle 360,000 records in what was really less than a minute. That's, that's quite impressive. So one way we can refer to a column is that data frame dot column name, just plain text. Another option we have when we're slicing data is data frame, no period, but instead a square bracket and then quote, and then the name of the column, close quote, close square bracket, either work fine in most cases. So typically either single quote or double quote will work. So let's try it like this just to make sure we're getting different results. I'll say head three. And there we go. We got head three. One more thing we can do is iLock. So iLock will, we've just seen how to select a column. iLock will allow us to select a row. I will warn you, it's a little bit tricky because it uses indexes or indices is proper. Uh, but nonetheless, let's see what crashes df iloc2 colon 4 gives us. It gives us 16xx queen city and again 16xx queen city and age 24, age 27. So let's see where those fit. Uh, also notice that it gives us a total of two rows. So let's see where age 24 and age 27 fit in our grander data. If I navigate up towards the top, you see we already did our head statement here. So we have our first record, but very careful. Take a look at the number on the left. We start counting with zero. And then we have our second record. Neither of these look familiar just yet. Neither of them are on Queen City Avenue. Uh, looks like I-75. Looks like these are on the interstate. Now record number two, which is actually the third record because we start counting with zero. Well, there we go. There we go. 16XX Queen City, age 24. And record number three, 16XX Queen City, age 27. So these are the two rows that we selected. Uh, but remember, start counting with zero. So zero, one, we're going to skip those. Now we pick up row two and row three. We do not pick up row four. Okay, all of that being said, what have we learned about this selection? If we have two colon four, it means start with that begin index and include that begin index. In other words, what we would say is begin index inclusive. And then it says capture every row from that point until the end index, which is four, but do not include the end index. That means end index exclusive. So three things we have to think about. We start counting with zero. Begin index is inclusive. End index is exclusive. That can be a little tricky and that's why I say this one takes a bit of practice. Uh, generally in a lot of programming languages I find these selections with inclusive and exclusive can be a little bit goofy sometimes. Uh, let's try one more experiment. So what if I say crashes df 0 colon 1. Now think about what that's going to return because we start counting with 0, begin index inclusive, end index exclusive. So if we say 0 colon 1, what we're saying is start with 0 and include it and include everything from 0 until 1, but do not include 1. So my prediction is this will give us exactly and only the very first row of our data, which I believe was a crash on I-75. And sure enough, if we look here, we see it's row 0. I-75 at the 1.8 mile marker. Uh, which, if I'm doing my math right, would be right around Ezra Charles Drive, somewhere up there. Uh, probably not even that far, probably more like Liberty Street, right around that exit, very close to downtown. Uh, and sure, yeah, West, West End, yeah, West End, Queensgate, uh, right when you're coming through downtown, that's on the west side. Uh, so sure enough, that gives us our selection. So this is a quick look at some Python commands to grab data, import data, and do some very simple manipulation on the data. There is much, much more we're going to do with this. Stay tuned as we learn some more tricks. Thank you.